Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Are you excited to be in church this morning? Praise God. I want to especially welcome everyone who wants to church this morning. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to believe that coming here this morning, your heart is open to receive. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to you, will minister life to you, and the entrance of his word will bring light indeed in the name of Jesus. I want to say a very big thank you to Apostle Lilo. Thank you very much, sir. It's wonderful to have you here this morning. Thank you very much for being a blessing to us. And we know that you are still open to being a blessing to us. Thank you, sir. Okay. By God's grace, I started a teaching series. And um, we have moved. We have transitioned from one level of teaching to another. And um, I'm trusting God that we're going to be able to see something fresh this morning as it has to do with the other areas that God communicates to people then we also believe next week something else will come up but in the same light to perfect and balance what we have started already so I want you to pay attention look at your neighbor tell the person pay attention can you say to the person please pay attention Bible says for God is in his holy temple let all the earth be silent the reason many people never hear from God is because they are too busy in the hustle and bustle of life the many distractions everywhere they don't pay attention now you have come to church is not a guarantee that you will hear from God the slightest opportunity to be distracted by your phone can get you out of focus it is a very small thing that gets a radio frequ- a radio um, signal or frequency out of the station just very small just a light tuning how many of you have observed that light tuning you he start hearing something else just a very light tuning you start hearing something else and that's what happens to a lot of believers when they come to church their minds are on many other things don't let that be your portion don't be like that are we here together so say to yourself we are not like that we are focused people we listen to the word of god and we grow by the word of god amen so when i started teaching i told you that every believer every believer hears the voice of god but the problem is that they don't understand what it is saying. So everybody sees dreams, but they don't understand the dream. Hearing the voice is not the problem. Understanding what it is saying and knowing what it is saying is the real issue. So sometimes you hear many voices, but can you discern? Why did I say so? Jesus said in Matthew chapter, John chapter 10 verse 27, He said, I know my sheep. Are you here together? He says, my sheep hears my voice and, they know, and I know them and they follow me. In other words, every person in the sheepfold will hear the voice. But the problem is they follow me because some people are in the sheep food they hear the voice but the voice of a stranger is clear to them than the voice of god and the voice you pay attention to more is the voice you will hear more if you pay attention to the voice in the media you will hear the media more if you pay attention to your friends you will hear your friends more if you pay attention to the noise going around town you will hear the noise more the voice you pay attention to more determines what becomes clear in your spirit are we here together church so you must understand that god's desire is for every one of us to be able to know his voice like a child will know the voice of the father but when children are little it's difficult for them to be able to discern their father or mother's voice but growing up over time you know that's my mom's voice that's my dad's voice why you stayed with them so in the whole of the teaching series please understand that in understanding god's voice and discerning it's no shortcut the shortest cut growing to know god's voice is staying and dwelling with him that's why he says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty if we have stayed together and we have been gisting and we have been talking there's no how i will know your voice now it is maybe god helping us maybe time permits i'll do an illustration that will help you see how distractions can come up and how you can really focus on hearing the voice of god glory to god so i told you that god speaks to dreams and visions is that not and he still does that today is that not very well he shows visions he shows dreams i explained the difference between dreams and visions number two i said that god speaks through people people and in speaking through people i said number one that he will speak through wise godly counsel the bible says in the midst of the multitude of counsel there is what safety 
so it, it, it's trying to say that when you are able to assess counsel you can be sure that you can now discern what god is saying out of the mouth of two or three of those counsel is aligning based on what is impressed in your heart also you can be sure and sometimes something is in your heart but it is not god because you are beclouded your sense of judgment has been beclouded by your passion and emotion and lost over that particular thing so you can hear god clearly so god might have to use people through counsel to correct you are we here together church number two i said in speaking through people God can also use people to confirm something he has said to you before. It could be your brother, your sister. It could be a conversation with a Christian brother. And you just said, this is it. This is it. This is it. And it's like, what, what did I just say? Don't worry. Don't worry. Something just dropped. Why? Because you've been having a conversation before, but it's not yet clear until you had that external conversation with somebody and it begins to bring clarity to you. Are we here together? In talking about that, I also moved and I advanced and said, God still speaks through people and he will use the gifts, spiritual gifts, the gift of prophecy the gift of word of knowledge the god of word of wisdom and what tongues plus interpretation so where there is tongues and there's an interpretation it's a prophetic word for you are we here together i took time i explained the difference between the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom i took time to explain to you about prophecy how one is foretelling and the other one is foretelling by now you should know that you're already in a bible school so i took my time to explain if you go back to those teachings and you pay attention to them they will make you that you'll be neither barren nor deaf towards the things of the spirit you'll be able to understand how god speaks it'll be easy for you to discern the voice of god am i communicating church yes i moved forward and i started also explaining to us that um god also would speak through preachings and teachings that's still true people through preachings and teachings you know when you come to church you hear the word of god you see god spoke to me this morning while i was preparing he said son one of the major problem is not that people don't hear me is that people don't do what they hear me say <sighs> because the particular area i'll be dealing with this morning has to do with the general way god speaks to everyone Every single person god says they hear god told me the money said they hear me the problem is that they don't hear if, if you if you sit a person down and counsel them they will tell you what i said that they are fighting with they will tell you the impression i have put in their heart that they are quarreling and arguing with if only they can listen to me and jesus christ speaking he said if you love me keep my commandment that means keep my word do what i have said to you are we here together church am i communicating yes so through the preaching of the word of god that i am speaking right now everyone seated here god will be speaking different things to all of us why the word of god will come to us together but god will direct it particularly to people based on the different needs in their heart based on the different questions that they are asking so i can preach a fine sermon this morning and somebody is interpreting the sermon as it has to do with a family challenge that he's having and getting direction another person interprets the sermon as it has to do with a business challenge and begins to get direction another person interprets the sermon why because he is the spirit that searches the heart of people and by the communication of the truth through the preaching of the word he knows what truth a particular person needs so god and his spirit is like a physician who understands how to diagnose carefully and prefer medical solution so in the teaching of the word of god you see the holy spirit preferring through the word of god he's saying this is what this guy needs so i said something but he's interpreting it the way the person will need it that's the word of god and many times people leave the service and they know what god has said but when they get back to their house the distraction again See that thing the pastor said, am I sure it was God? It was God, but you're fighting it. Or it is God as it were, but you're fighting it. Are we here together, church? Am I communicating? Yes. So after I had said that, I also said God can speak to, I still said God can speak to us through songs. Am I making sense here now? Songs, lyrics. And I said, today, God speaks to us through social media, status. You read articles on the media and God said, that article, you have not been reading before, but you went here today because I wanted you to come here. You just open the website and that website, God just, and it comes to you live and you say, wow, this is it. Answers, why? Because in every dispensation, God knows where the attention of people will be focused on and he knows how to direct his own channel, his itself through that channel to speak with them. So don't just use the social media platforms carelessly. You probably saw a post and you just want to swap and the Holy Spirit says, swap back. And you just swap back. And when you read it the second time, what you heard the first time was different from what you heard the second time and he said i have spoken and you kept swapping and as you're swapping you just lose interest in swapping 
and you just started thinking about that thing, God can be speaking to you. Are we here together, church? Am I communicating to somebody? I also said God uses circumstances to speak. I think that's why I stopped last week. Circumstances to speak to people. Usually God will look for different circumstances, things happening in your life. Sometimes at times, things look very tough and you want to just run out and God is saying, don't run out. I'm trying to communicate something because Jesus himself lent obedience by the things that he wore, he suffered. So you must understand that the believer that God is not wicked when he's trying to take you through a process. It is because he wants to ensure that you'll be tough, you'll be made. So he says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, for the trying of your faith will work patience. In the process of that, there are many things to learn. You'll be learning how to build stamina. You'll be learning how to encourage other people when they find themselves in the same situation. God will be speaking to you on how to do many things in the midst of tight situations. But many people become weak in life because they chicken out of the process. They don't like the process. Are we here together, church? I spoke about that. But today, let me speak to us the bible says in hebrews can we go to hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 then let's start opening up scriptures and let god speak to our hearts he said god who at sundry times or various times in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets in other words god has been speaking by the prophets he still don't speak through the office of the prophets the fivefold ministry is that not very good it says had in this last day spoken to us by who his son whom he appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world so he says in this last days god has chosen to speak to us by who his son and when jesus was on the face of the earth physically present on the face of the earth he was speaking to people and they were hearing him clearly but you know even though they were hearing him clearly many people still didn't do what he said can you remember the rich young ruler he said go and sell everything and come to me he, no there's no voice that would have been clearer than that saying go and sell everything and come to me the guy heard it the guy heard it. the bible says he's sorrowfully and bitterly left that's how somebody is hearing me god is saying to somebody if you put your money in that business it will sink and you say no i like that don't make up your mind god is saying if you continue with that relationship you will cry and say ah no 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 no, no. we have been loving since see it's not by the length of your love it's by the dis- the instant voice of the spirit commanding you to do things are we here together now you just you just you just need to understand that if a person sees jesus physically and disobeyed much more those who are not seeing so you see we need a lot of faith to be able to understand that this is god's voice and i'll take steps am i making sense here now so god is speaking through, through his son in diverse manners he spoke and but through his son now he speaks to us in also different ways and one of the ways that he speaks after jesus left this world he said i will send to you another comforter and the comforter is the person of who the holy spirit so today when you hear the voice of god you'll be hearing who's which person speaking to you most mostly the holy spirit is the holy spirit that you'll be hearing so you hear the holy spirit in different ways now it is possible to hear the voice of god the way apostle paul heard it i've not talked about that one maybe you add it to the previous one before we move on a clear audible voice now a clear audible voice is what apostle paul heard on his way to what they call it Damascus, the Damascus experience. He was on his way to Damascus. Can you put it? Um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter nine. Is that? Let's let's look at it together. Acts of the Apostles, chapter. Is it nine? Yes. From verse one, the Bible says, "And Saul, yet breathing out threats and slaughtering against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. Let's move and desired of him letter to Damascus to the synagogues, and if he found any of the way, any, any of these." this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto where jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly there shined around about him a light from where heaven and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying unto him now this voice he heard was a clear voice it was a broad daylight voice. it was not um inner voice no 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 it was a clear voice like you hear your brother talking to you you hear the horn of the uh, of a car trailer clear voice he heard that voice clearly saul saul why persecutors thou me and he said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutors it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and he trembled and astonished said lord what will thou have me do and the lord said unto him arise and go to the city and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do and see what now and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice but not seeing any man physical they were there it was an encounter they heard the voice they knew they can't deny paul's call but they didn't see any man but paul knew that this voice would only have been who god so sometimes it's possible in this dispensation to hear a clear audible voice 
Yeah, so let's keep that one in one corner in case God speaks to you that way like he spoke to Samuel. You know that was what happened to Samuel. It was a clear voice. He thought it was Eli speaking. Very clear voice. And he went and I, Eli said, I'm sorry. He went next to hear the voice. Say, here I am. Speak for your servant word. Here. So he did that and it worked for him. Glory to God. So let's move ahead now. Today, this is very careful. So pay attention. It will help you because this is how God communicates now. Today you will hear God speak many of the times through a small still voice through a small still voice it is usually inaudible but internally compelling i'm taking my time please follow my lines it is inaudible that means you will not hear it from outside you will hear it from inside but it will be strong in the inside that's when you say things like i just know in my heart Ah, no, 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 no. I was, I, and I know that voice said, don't go through this road. You know those times? It's a small, still voice from inside. And the voice speaks authoritatively, but not forcefully. That's how the Holy Spirit speaks. He doesn't say, if you don't go there, you will die now. No, he will not do like that. Most of the times he will be calm. Just say, don't go there. You hear it very small, still, but it is compelling, it's authoritative, it is strong, but it is not loud externally. Are we here together, church? Yes. So, you hear people say things like uh, uh, a voice said to me go right move now I hear what I'm saying here now move now I was driving with my wife some years back and we're coming back from the island and while we're on traffic that day I, I think I shared this testimony with you guys before I just heard the voice it was not outside it was inside it was strong it was heavy the voice said to me now move out of this lane now I heard it fast before I could discuss anything with her I had moved out of the lane as I moved out of the lane it was less than 5 seconds a trailer just a, a bus a, a trailer was it a trailer was in front of the bus just came and hit just where I would have been move out of this lane now I didn't say God are you sure I didn't look at my you know normally when you're driving you look at your side mirror to be sure whether somebody's there I didn't bother whether somebody was there I just zoomed as I zoomed there one two three boom and I said any man who doesn't hear the voice of God will be a dead man in no time many people died like that they neglected the voice don't travel say lie lie I made up my mind me I'll travel how can you father holy spirit i ask that you will keep he said no i'm not saying i can't keep you i say don't go it's different same keep me from that people keep me and saying don't go are we getting what i'm saying here now yes so we must be sensitive to that now if you look at the bible you'll see a lot of things because of time i may not be able to show all acts of the apostles chapter 8 verse 29 acts of the apostles chapter 8 verse 29 then the spirit said unto philip go near and join thyself to this chariot very simple voice so philip was just standing and he heard it go near and join thyself to this chariot and philip did exactly that and as he was doing that he met the utopian eunuch he had an encounter with utopian eunuch taught him the word of god after he had taught him baptized him after he baptized him as soon as he came out of the water with the utopian eunuch the next thing philip what vanished he heard the voice go near see study the character of god's voice go near and join thyself to this chariot see, see how simple it sounds can you see how it sounds now? Yes. Go near. Join thyself to this chariot. Now look at 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 to 13. 1 Kings chapter 19, 11 to 13. 1 Kings chapter 19, 11 to 13. Please just follow this teaching carefully. It will help you. Then he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind went, rent the mountain, and break in pieces the rock before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake but the lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire but the lord was not in the fire now it doesn't mean god is not cannot speak through earthquake or fire and everything but this is the encounter of this particular person moses went to the fire and god's voice was in the fire is that not it's just showing you that these are other ways god speaks through a lot of things but for this um, uh, 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 prophet here now he now says but the lord was not in the fire and after the fire a small still voice and it was so when elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave and behold there came a voice unto him and said what doest thou here can you see it's a very simple voice god, god is not you will not be confused you will know that this is god the only problem is that you argue it are we here together you will know it's very clear god is never confused god is very clear when he gives an instruction it is clear when he says the thing is clear from your heart you will just know that this sounds like no 
this is no this is a no this is a no but before you know the devil tries the next thing is his confusion the devil now comes how can you say no this is the only opportunity for your life you know then your mind will now flow can you see it started with god the devil enter your mind will now flow your mind will now start analyzing it ah if i miss this opportunity eh? what will i say have happened to my life how many my how many voices now eh? then the next one will now be the voice of popular people around you so you know say ah and everybody believes so everybody you have joined everybody's voice so how many voices now four so you want to go with what everybody is saying plus what your mind is calculating logically and analytically and what the devil is saying that will suggest every other one except that which is God's are we here together church are you sure you understand what I'm saying this morning very well so today God speaks this way a lot he gives direct instructions and leadings he drops a simple word phrase or sentence telling you what to do I told you some years ago we're doing a breathing project in church and I was trusting to hear God about what we're going to do I came back from um, law school then the the church building had collapsed because they used um, canopy material and I knelt down and I finished praying that and as I was about to stand up I had not heard anything I'm telling God God, what are we going to do how are we going to raise the money what is going to happen where are we going to borrow the money can we borrow can we I was just thinking many many things and I just heard as I stood there. It was inside. He said, faithful is he that call it. He will do it. When I stood up, I smiled. My prayer was answered. And truly, the faithful God showed up. What a project that would have taken us three months. You know, or maybe more than that. Before you knew it, within a span of about three weeks thereabouts, we're already onto it. We already started hitting it. And results started coming. Are we here together, church? You must understand how to hear the voice of God. When I finish, we're about to start this ministry. I told you the story. I'm sharing it again so that you can understand these things. I heard God while I was praying. He said, strike when the iron is hot. Strike now very simple voice and i said strike now we entered in 40 days fasting now when you hear god it doesn't mean you should start running when you hear god it might mean that you should now enter another dimension of prayer to now get clarity because that was just a free sentence i heard strike on what where location what will i be saying is it the same message or are you changing it are you giving another thing who are the people how am i going to start what are we going all these details will start coming in the place of word hearing god are we here together are you sure you're getting my gist this morning church are you here with me this morning yes so you must understand that so god's voice is clear a clear word a phrase a sentence a command an instruction a direction words that will give peace they will give peace they will give peace so in 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 this light of god speaking through a small still voice now i'm still on that listen now it can come as his voice or a nudging it's, it's not it's acts so the, you're, you're being pushed to move you're being pushed the bible says and jesus was driven by the spirit god didn't tell him go to the wilderness to pray he just knew that where he was time had expired from staying in this place so he just he was driven by the spirit if you read the the, the, the greek meaning of that means like taking like you are taking a whip to flock person somebody to say move now so jesus christ was driven by the spirit into the wilderness the spirit compelled him so there are times god is speaking to you compelling you to do a thing pushing you to do a thing or nudging your heart to do a particular thing there are sometimes the voice of god can be total discomfort in a particular area you're no longer comfortable with where you are you're no longer comfortable with everything that's happening everything begins to go against you then you begin to ask god god what are you saying what are you saying what are you saying are we here together church yes in this same light sometimes it can be what they call God trying to refuse you to do a thing. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. Let's look at it. Acts of the Apostles um, chapter 20. Let's look at 20, 22 to 24. Can you do the Passion's translation for us? Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, 22 to 24. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, 22 to 24. It says, and now I'm being compelled by the Holy Spirit. Can you see that now? So how is God speaking to him now? By what? Compelling him. I'm being compelled by the Holy Spirit to go to Jerusalem without really knowing what will happen there so god is speaking to paul here by compelling him to go to jerusalem without really knowing but the prophets already have said some things so there's a confirmation he says yet i know that the holy spirit warns me in the town after town saying chains and afflictions are prepared for you so agabus the prophet had told paul he said chains and afflictions they will attack you there if you go there you're going to be in serious trouble and all that he said i have heard the other time they were discussing it again and they told him he said 
my, none, of the, none of those things moved me. But now when he sat down on his own, he was being compelled to go to Jerusalem. Then as he sat down, sat reasoning and thinking, he said, but ah, they said chains, afflictions. Ah, should I change my mind? But no, Paul chose to go through that process. Why? He was sure that God was leading him. God was just using the prophet to tell him the things that he will meet there, but not trying to dissuade him from going. Are we here together now? Yes. So God can lead you in that manner. Yes. Then this one is very important. I want you to please pay attention to it. Uh, I hope the supernatural night sleep is not helping some people. Is it still helping you? You should have recovered by now. Yes. So, God speaks through a conversation in your spirit. Please listen to this one. It's very common also. A conversation in your spirit. Now, he drops a thought in your spirit. And your spirit communicates to your mind. God doesn't communicate to your mind directly. There's a, there's a flow. The Holy Spirit is a part. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. So when God is speaking, he's speaking through his own spirit into your spirit. His spirit communicating with spirit. So as soon as the message drops to your spirit, it cannot be executed as it goes through your mind. But the problem with the human mind is that the human mind likes processing, analysis, calculation. Because what God says to you to do sometimes, it might not be reasonable. But it is what? Possible. Mm, You didn't get that. It might not sound reasonable, but it is what? Possible. So when you put it through the channel of your mind and start processing it, you will think probably it's not just God speaking. But many of the times you might now say, if I know this is coming from my spirit now, all I just need to do is hold on to that word by what? Faith. That's where faith comes in. So that word has dropped. Ah. How can this thing be done? And you say, Father, but I trust you. I believe that your word will come to pass. I know you will do it. Because if you allow your mind, your mind will not say, how much is the money? When will you get it? If you take 10 years of your life, you cannot raise the money. That project is not possible. It can never be done. And by the time your mind finishes analyzing it, analyzing it Satan wash it down for you. And say, my dear, don't waste your time. Don't wait. Just wait in the future. Somehow it will happen. No. If God is saying, act, faith is what? Now. There are many times God is telling you to do something and you know there's no resources anywhere. But he's saying move. Why? Because take your leg. If you drop it on the water, it will become ice. If you are still seeing the water, you'll be seeing normal water. Until your leg is raised and you drop it, it will not become ice. That's how people follow God. That's why we say that people sometimes say, I'm, I'm following God blindly. Many of the people today who are trying to calculate following God, that's why they have failed. Human philosophers trying to say, no, 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 let me tell you something. All these things pastors are preaching in the church these days. Listen, you need to have your own mind of your own. We don't have mind of our own. We have the mind of Christ. The scripture directs our mind. The scripture leads our heart. Say, no, 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 I'm not like that. Let me tell you something. When, after a pastor finished preaching whatever he's saying, or whatever he's saying, and he's in the Bible, and it's whatever he's saying, is he a human story? We have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we spoke to you, the word of God. Are we here together? The question is, go and check if it's in scripture. If it's in scripture, then do it. Except if it is not there. Are we here together, church? You check. But if you grow with that mindset of, uh, I have my own, let me tell you something. No, I have my, I can think. I don't let anybody come and fool me. Who's, who's, uh, who's, who's trying to fool you? Is it God or the man? Because if the man is saying something and you can stretch it through the lens of the scripture and see that that's what God is saying, please overlook the man and follow what the word of God is saying. Are we here together, church? Are you sure you're getting what I'm trying to communicate? Yes. So, if... Now, listen now. He draws a thought in your spirit and your spirit communicates to your mind. So, you say things like, I feel God wants me to do this. That feeling you think is you. It's no longer you. It's the spirit that has channeled it to your mind and your mind has appreciated it by word, faith. So, it comes in form of a word, a feeling. It comes in form of what? A feeling. So, you now say, ah, I feel... I feel, so as you're feeling the feel, you need to just find strength. Then as you start feeling the feel, if it is God, the next thing is that you're now experiencing the peace that follows the feeling. Are we here together now? Are you sure you get what I'm saying now? So let me go to that now. It will now come after from dimension and flow. You now have what we call inner peace. Somebody say inner peace. This is how the peace test works. Peace is the language of the spirit that communicates divine approval. And the lack of inner peace is a sign that God is not involved in the situation. Peace is a language of the spirit that communicates divine approval. I hear what I'm saying now. And as soon as you realize that there is lack of inner peace, it is a sign that God is not involved in that movement. Why? He's very, very clear. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. He said, you will keep him in peace. 
perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. If it is God, there will be peace. If it is God, there will be peace. As soon as you you lose your peace over the matter, God is not involved in it. As soon as you cannot find your peace and you want to send that money for that investment and you just cannot find your peace, hold on and tell them. They say, no, if you don't pay, it will close. Say, let it close. I just cannot find my peace. Because it could be God speaking to you. Say what? Stop. Are we here together now? Are you sure you're getting my gist? You're being with the person, you've known him for too long, you've been flowing together, and you're about to, just at the point where he says something to you, and you're about to start the relationship, and God says, shows you something, and you lose your peace. And as soon as you lose your peace, the devil begins to calculate, please overlook that thing. See, all men do like that. All men, let me tell you something, you'll not get a man that does not drink, so just marry him like that. And you say it's true. They now show you an example of your uncle, now show you one of your auntie, and they're not living fine, you don't know what is happening in their house. They are showing you outside. And God knows you as a different person that there are some things you may not be able to handle. Your auntie might be able to handle it and survive. If you enter, you might die. So don't you measure your own life by the life of another person. Are we here together now? When you lose your peace, it is a language of the spirit that communicates approval when there is peace. As soon as lack of peace exists, it shows that God is saying, I am not there. Why? He will keep in perfect peace those whose hearts are stayed on him do you understand it now so listen now usually when you are at the point of making a decision and you just seem to have be at peace in your spirit go ahead but if you lose your peace is a red flag a sign that god might not be involved so what do you do next when you lose your peace seek counsel from godly people start praying as you start praying god will drop somebody in your heart and you're supposed to seek counsel from as you seek counsel from a person you just cover that the person is talking to you and is exactly like ah oh, and i thought of the same thing oh ah oh, that was what's in my heart Exactly. God is not wicked. People don't just listen. Are we here together, church? Am I talking to somebody? Is the Holy Ghost speaking to somebody in this service this morning? You, I know you're looking at Pastor Mom, there's no energy today. Just listen to me. I'm trying to teach something. No energy here. It's just for you to get the language of the Spirit so that you can leave home after this teaching series and be able to say, now I know how to hear this God. I pray it will not be difficult for you to understand the voice of God. Yes. Yes. You want to make a business investment. You want to purchase a property. And as you're about to pay for the property, all of a sudden, one red flag just shows. And they say, ah, we're very sorry. Oh, um, our elder's brother will not sign this thing. Oh, everything has been concluded. And you are right there before them. And they say, and this is the person who is supposed to sign will not be signing. Oh, so ah, we just want you to know ahead of time. And as soon as that is said, something in your spirit rises and says, stand up, live here now. And you start negotiating. Say, well, well, why is he not there? Okay, okay. And the spirit says, live here now. And you say, you see, um, let's talk about this thing tomorrow. You see, if you don't sign it now, the lawyer is going to be traveling. Let him travel. No problem, sir. Why? Because I don't know why the spirit is saying, live here now. Like Pastor Apostolo said, even Jesus himself said, I don't act until I have what? Heard from the Father. So if Jesus has to hear from the Father to move, who are you not to hear from the Holy Spirit to move? Am I communicating to somebody this morning? Get it right and it will help you. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Let's do this together. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Philippians 4 6 to 7. Can we have it on the screen please? Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and what? Supplication with what? Thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Then what will follow next? And the peace of God which passeth all understanding. It shall do what? Keep your heart and your what? Mind. As soon as your heart and your mind is not kept in peace, don't go ahead. Because after prayer, supplication, you have made your request known. So some people say, I, I prayed about the relationship. I've been praying, I've been, I've prayed. I, I really don't, I'm not very sure. But the way I'm seeing it like this now, as I'm praying, uh, you have lost your peace. You are trying to encourage yourself with plenty of English. Please stop that. Why the English? You have lost your peace. You need counsel. So start praying and look for who God will be leading you right to speak with. And he might even lead you to a scripture to just read. And that scripture solves your problem. Are we here together, church? God speaks. God speaks. Glory to God. Yes. So God gives peace. He is the prince.
Prince of Peace. The lack of peace is an indication that God may never be involved. You know God's approval is in a step when despite the unrest around the environment, you experience inner peace. So sometimes it might even be a relationship matter or a business matter or something and, and everybody around, almost everybody around, they don't seem to really agree but you know that you know that you know that you know that the Holy Spirit told you that this is it. And you are still convinced and you still have your peace. Sometimes it might be needed for you to just take time again, give some space. If the peace continues like that, follow God, leave men. Because men too can fail. I hope somebody is not hearing that today and saying, Oh, Pastor Mavis, that means if my parents say no, I will say yes. Yeah, your parents can say no and it might be a yes from God, but you need to take time, patiently listen and know and try to convince them and try to show them. And the more you are trying to show them and you are not beclouded by the love or the lost or whatever, it's easier for you to hear God. Are we here together now? So you are not beclouded by the love of the lost or whatever that you You just know that I'm following the voice of God. It will be clear. Now, this applies to business. It applies to relationships. It applies to parenting. It applies to family. It applies to everything that concerns your life. Glory to Jesus. Are you here with me, church? Are you sure you understand what I'm saying? Yes. John chapter 16 verse 33. It says, The things that I have spoken unto you, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you may have what? Peace. In the world you will have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have word overcome the world. Next point, God speaks through silence. Silence. Somebody say silence. Somebody say silence. He's speaking, but the language is what? Silence. Language is a li- silence in the realm of silence is a language in the realm of the spirit. Silence is also a language in the realm of the spirit. I will explain. There are times where God is just silent. Nothing is, you're not hearing anything. Many of the times, look at some of the things that silence means. Number one, it means keep doing what you have been doing. You want to take another step. God, God you have prayed and prayed. God. What he's saying is what? Keep doing what you have been doing. You are driving with a phone, a GPRS. And the phone goes and says something like, keep driving three kilometers. Is that not? Every turn you see, will the phone keep talking about those turn? Why? Why? I have put you on the right track till three kilometers before you hear my voice again. By the time you are two kilometers, you will not hear anything. By the time you are close to the third kilometer, you will now hear at the right, at the, at the, at the, at the junction, uh, at this little street, turn right. Why? But he's saying, I don't need to talk if I have told you before that you must go three kilometers. But because of the uneasiness or the potholes of the road, you want to pass a shortcut, please be careful. You have seen plenty of shortcuts. There are many streets around. But God says three kilometers. The GPRS is saying what? Three kilometers. If you don't get to three kilometers, no matter how hard and tough it is, stay there. Stay there. Why? Because there's something about getting to that three kilometers. It's at that point that you will hear the next voice. That's God for you. Are we here together, church? Next, or other times, it could be that God is saying, go and obey the last instruction. So you have been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and you are not hearing anything. You know why? There might be something God has said before that you have not done anything about. So God is saying, where did we stop the last time? How many of you have had lecturers, you come to class and as soon as they come to class, they sit down and say, and where did we stop the last time? And when they say, nobody can answer anything in the class, the man carries his bag and he what? He leaves. Uh, that's it. Because he's saying, you have not even done the last one. The last one we finished talking about, I've not seen any action. I've not seen anything. Now you're saying, God, what are you saying? God said, what did we discuss in the last class? Go back and do what? Obey it. Am I talking sense to somebody? Is this a making sense in your spirit this morning? Is God speaking clearly to your mind this morning? I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. You will not make an irreparable mistake in your life. You will not make a destiny error in your life. And there are people who are in one thing or the other you are involved and you are being hearing in your mind that this thing can destroy you and you are still pressing on. I pray that God will put a compelling voice in your heart that will redirect your step this season of your life. In the name of Jesus. Silence can also mean go and see what the Bible has to say about that matter. So, you are not hearing anything from God. Go and be reading your Bible. Go and be reading your Bible. Go and be reading your Bible. Forget about anything. This is, I don't know, I, I've been praying about it and I've not heard anything. Go and be reading your Bible. Stay with the word of God. 
Are we here together, church? Go and start worshipping and praising God. Go and start blessing His name. Just enjoy your relationship with God. Paradventure, in that light, God can open up and something else will come. Are we here together now? Another language of silence can be what? Silence can mean go through the process. I will see you at the other side of the tunnel. Do you understand that language? Go through it. Say, God, but why? And God says, you too, but why? Why are you not doing what we are saying? Say, God, hey, and God is saying, you too. Just do what I am saying to you. Are we here together, church? Is somebody understand what I'm saying? Is it simple enough to understand these things? It's, it's not complex and ambiguous. Is that not? Very, very good. Very, very good. So whenever God seems to be silent, go back to your last discussion with him. You will find what he's saying. I say this once in a wrap. I say one, the, 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 the last part that I want to dwell on and um, we'll round off for today. Praise God. Yes. Now, I'm not going to teach long on this. I'll just let you, because you already know, God speaks through angelic visitations. Is that not? Angels visit people and talk to them. Is that not? Yes. The Bible says in Acts of the Apostles that Paul came to the people in Acts 27 while they were traveling to Rome and um, they had a Heracladon. The ship was in serious tumor. So initially, by the impression in the heart, Paul said to them, he said, ah, that we may lose this ship, oh, but I think everything will be fine eventually. Let's, um, no, he actually said, he said he was not sure of what was going to happen. But as they are going, that people should not be um, uh, uh, um, uh, under pressure. He told them that, but he had not heard anything. But in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, go, go, go to the screen, let me show this. Go, go, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, I think it will be good to help us. Go to verse, go to verse 10 to 11 first. 10 to 11. And he said unto them, Sirs, I perceive. So the first one was what? Perception. Is God also speaking? Is that not? So Paul had the voice of God in what? Perception. I perceive that this voyage will be hurt and much damage, not only of the laden and ship, but also of our world lives. That's Paul speaking. He has perceived that the ship will damage, but he has added something to it. Listen now. He said, nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which Paul had what? Spoken. Now, this is the first instant of the talk. Now, move forward to verse 23 and see what Paul now said when it becomes clear you will know verse 23 of that same chapter he said for there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord whose I am and whom I serve now he's talking with boldness and authority it's no longer I perceive I have met, I met an angel we have discussed the matter so the next thing he says fear not Paul thou must be brought before Caesar and lo God had given thee and all them that sail with thee initially he perceived it and he told them ah we might lose our life. The real thing God was saying is, perceive that, don't worry. This thing's happening, but calm down. He said that initially. But when he now saw the angel, it became what? Clear. So he said, fear not. Nobody will lose their life. Angels. I won't take time on that. Let's move on. God speaks through miracle signs and wonders. In the land of Egypt, you saw all the miracle signs and wonders that God was showing them. Is that not? God was showing them all the miracle, the signs and the wonders to compel them to do what? Believe. So God uses miracle signs and wonders to show people that he exists as God. It is usually to steer their faith and ignite supernatural hunger and test for the believer. God shows us signs and wonders to steer our faith and organize supernatural tests and tests so that we know that God exists. So when you see a miraculous sign, you are steered to believe in God more. Am I making sense here now? So those signs and wonders you see happen, God is also speaking, telling us, I am still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Do you understand that now? When Daniel escaped the lions then, it was God speaking to the king. Because later the king now said, now I know that God does what? Leave. The same thing when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego entered the fire, through that miraculous sign that they were not born, the king now said, now I know that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the God over all the earth. Is that not? That's how God speaks to. It's another way God communicates. Yes. Then let me say this. Listen now. God also communicates. Have you written this one now? Through prayer. Prayer. This is how God works in prayer. When you start praying, God gives an instruction through any of these other means that I have mentioned. As you start praying and seeking the face of God on something, He might lead you to the Word. He might, you might have an angelic visitation. You might have a ministration by a friend through conversation. So prayer is important because prayer helps to ignite the voice. It ignites what makes God speak or give you an instruction. Am I here? Are you getting what I'm saying now? So as you start praying, God can now lead you to somebody. God can now 
open your eyes to see god can now t- by a small still voice while you just rise in prayer show you something or tell you pick your bible now read this particular chapter am i making sense here now and as soon as you read that chapter you get the answer for what you're saying so prayer is very essential because it is communication with god so after you are finished speaking it is expected that god will also do what speak back so he can speak back through his word he can speak back through people he can speak back through a vision he can speak back through small still voice every other means god can speak back to us are we here together church are you sure you understand what i've said today okay now finally don't miss this one if you miss this one then you missed everything did you hear what i just said write it down god speaks through his word god speaks through his word you know why people get tired of reading the bible the devil doesn't want them to hear the voice of god you know why people sleep whenever they carry the bible as soon as they carry the bible you know many people the bible is their sleeping pill if you want to sleep, you have been having issues with sleeping and all that. You just carry the Bible. Hallelujah. You know why? It's the devil just doing like this. Thou shalt not hear. Thou shalt not hear. So what are you supposed to do? You stand up. You take action. You hold the Bible. You tell yourself, no, no, no. And if your style of reading the Bible is always whenever you are about to sleep and you're just like this. You are just fulfilling righteousness of reading the daily plan. That's what you are doing. If you want to read the Bible, read it like someone who knows that there is something God is about to say. Are we here together? Please listen as you flow now. Usually, speaking through the word, please listen now. Speaking through the word, the Bible is God's word to us today. God addresses his children today through the word of God more than every other source. I must tell you, more than every other source, God will speak through his word. Jesus is the eternal word made flesh. He is the eternal logos of God. He's the eternal logos of God. He's the eternal word made flesh. The essence of the compilation of scripture is so that through the scriptures, through the teachings of the word of God, you and I can find direction for our daily life. We can see God's instruction. We can know what God is saying to do. We can know how God is leading us. Am I talking sense to somebody here now? So every time you neglect studying the word of God or reading the Bible, you are neglecting hearing the voice of God. You can hear the voice of God every day. How? By reading the Bible. Every believer can hear the voice of God every day. Every believer can hear. So God has chosen that the scripture as inspired by the Holy Spirit will be his major way of speaking to us today. So he speaks to us generally, personally, and powerfully. Write it down. Through scriptures, God speaks to us how? Generally, and again, personally, and how? Powerfully. In First Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, All scriptures is God's breath and is useful for teaching. So if you want God to teach you every day, you should do what? Read the Bible. For a book, if you are doing something and you need somebody to talk back to you, whether it's right or wrong, what do you do? Read the Bible. For correcting, in case you are not sure what you are doing is right or wrong, where do you find answer? Read the Bible. For training in righteousness, if you want to grow and be a perfect man that is stable, that is not blown by every wind of doctrine, you must do what? Read the Bible. God speaks more today through scripture than every other means. Why? You don't need any special posture to say i want to hear like this or here i want to see carry the bible and do what read when you read it god is speaking to you say i don't hear from god anymore it's a lie you don't read your bible anymore if you read your bible with this understanding i'm giving to you now you'll be hearing from god every day somebody say every day can you say i hear from god and i hear him every day Yes, Second Peter chapter one. Go to the Bible. Let's do this together. Second Peter chapter one, sixteen to twenty-one. Second Peter chapter one, sixteen to twenty-one. This is the last one I used to close today. The next week I'll wrap up everything. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitnesses of His what Majesty. Go ahead. For He received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to Him from the excellent glory. He said, "This." is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and the voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mountain can you read along with me once ago now say we have also a more what do we have now a more sure word of word prophecy in other words any prophecy that contradicts this one is a wrong prophecy Anything that goes against this sure word is a wrong word. Why? We have a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto ye do well that you take heed as unto light that shines in the darkness, darker place, until the day is done and the day star arises in your word. 
take heed to what is in the word of God. Keep reading until the day star arises in your word heart. Go ahead now. He says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. He said, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the word Holy Ghost. Go ahead now. Is that all? Very well. So the holy men of God that wrote the scripture, they speak as they were read, as they were made by who? The Holy Ghost. So what are you supposed to do? Read it. So God speaks to us through scripture. I said what? Generally, uh-huh. personally, and what? Yes. He speaks generally through his word by clear instructions of scripture and through the examples of the life of people in the Bible. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 10. Can you open it? Let's do this together. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. Let's be fast about it. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. He said, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience. Uh-huh. Persecution, affliction, which came unto me at Antioch, at Ecomium and Lystra. What persecution I endured, but out of them the Lord word delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer word persecution. But evil men will was worse and worse, deceiving and be word deceived. Go ahead. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and as assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them from. He said that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture. Which are able to do what? Make you wise unto salvation. From a child, you have known the Holy Scripture. From a child, you have known the Holy Scripture. Which is able to make you what? Wise. So until you know the Scripture, you are a foolish man. Until you know the Scripture, you remain a foolish man. No matter how intelligent you are in academia, no matter how intelligent in what you have read, until you know... The fullness of what God is trying to communicate through scripture. You are what? A foolish person. He said, for God has chosen that through the foolishness of the preaching of the word of God, salvation will be revealed to people. He said he did not choose the wise and the mighty in their own eyes. But he has chosen the foolish things of the world so that he will teach them his eternal wisdom. The eternal wisdom of God is here. He's here. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying now? He's in the Bible. He's in the Bible. Go ahead. Let's finish it up. Finish it up. We're going to verse 17. Finish it up. Let's go ahead. Fast, please. Fast, please. Fast, please. Verse 17. He said, But continue down in the things which thou hast learned, and has been assured of knowing whom we have learned it from. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. For, and from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is where? In Christ Jesus. He says, All Scripture is given by. Of who? And is profitable for what? And for what? And for what? And for what? In. Uh, hey, what will happen to the person who reads it? Any day you want to hear from God, go and carry your Bible. Sit down with it and start reading and studying. God speaks to us generally through the scripture. Everything about marriage issues is in the Bible. Fornication is the... Are there not people committing fornication everywhere? Is it not in the Bible that people should not commit fornication? So is it that they are not hearing God? What happened? They are deaf. Eating one. Kubo. Their flesh is dominating. If you open it, it's there. Just you don't need any struggle. First Corinthians 3 16 to 17. He says that every sin that a man doeth is without his body. But he that committed fornication sin against his body. First Corinthians also says it that this is the will of God, Thessalonians, concerning you, that you abstain fornication. So somebody wakes up and he carries himself and he's just going there, he's fornicating everywhere, up and down like this. Yeah. He says he wants to hear God. How can you hear God? How can you how how do you want to hear God again? The one that he's written in the Bible, you're not hearing that one. It's another one that you want to hear. No, it's, you'll be hearing the, what Muhammad had, Prophet Jubri. That brought confusion on this world. That's what you're hearing. Say, so angel, Jubri. And those of people who always look for how you will go to one corner, you want to hear, see God by force. Listen to me. If you don't take care, you might start seeing devils. Let your heart be open if you really want to see God. Seeing God is not until you see a physical image. Seeing God can be going to your quiet place, start reading the Bible. If he needs to appear, he will appear. If you never see an appearance of God, it doesn't change the fact that God exists. Am I talking sense to somebody here now? So you read the Bible. What you need to know about fighting. You are fighting everywhere, quarreling, arguing, fighting, quarreling with the whole community. It's in the Bible that you should not fight. Follow peace with all men and holiness. You are fighting. Somebody, 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 somebody should tell you that this thing you are doing is against the will of God. By reading the Bible every day, you will read one day and God will say, follow peace. So I'm not quarreling again. Because you read the Bible. It's correcting you. It's instructing you. It's training you. It's teaching you. Are we here together, church? So if you don't read the Bible, how will you know that? 
personally God speaks to you through the scripture. Sometimes you are just doing some things and the scripture will just pop up in your heart. Just pop up in your heart. Just pop up in your heart. Just, ah. I've seen this thing before. I've seen this thing before. It's God talking to you. Am I talking sense to somebody? Are you sure you have learned anything this morning? Are you sure you have learned anything this morning? So you are about going, you are doing some terrible things and God, you just open the Bible one day and God shows. Listen to me, let me tell you something. I love you so much from the bottom of my heart, from the innermost recess of the whole of my being. And if I fail to show you the whole counsel of the word of God, I have deceived you eternally. Why? Because my deception can lead a person to eternal destruction. And I've told you, if you don't stay with this word of God, you will be going from place to place, listening to one prophet from one mountain that is confused, another person in the valley that is confused, instead of staying with the word of God. The Bible says the Berean Christians, they stayed with the word of God. They heard the voice of God. When you study the word of God, you know the character of the voice of God. You will understand how God will speak and how God will not speak. Just reading through the scripture, you'll be seeing his character. You'll be seeing how he talks. Every time he said, and God spoke unto Moses saying, watch it, watch it. How did he speak? Hey, that's how he talks. And God opened the eyes of Elijah and he said to him, you watch it again. Hey, that is how he speaks. Can you see how I've learned my life to know the voice of God? I learned how he speaks to the prophets. I learned the tone of his voice. I see that every time he speaks, he does not condemn people. But rather he speaks so that their heart will burn. And when their heart burns, they start asking, how do I correct this thing? How do I make adjustments? Why? His word is for correction, for instruction, for reproof in righteousness. It will train you. You'll be thoroughly furnished. And you will overcome the defilement that is in the world. you become more than a conqueror. you become everything that God wants to be. Can I tell you the truth? One of the reasons people don't hear God again in their life is that the little, little ones they see in the Bible, they don't follow it. It's only a foolish person that keeps talking to you over and over and over and you are not doing it and he's talking. Have you not read the Bible? That a word is enough for the wise. God is not foolish. He will not be slamming it like the way your mother or your father will say, I've told you before. I've told you before. God is not like that. I've told you. If you don't do it, you're on your own. I will continue to encourage you. I will continue to show you. I will continue to lead you through the same path. If you don't do it, you are what? On your own. Rise up on your feet, church. Knowing God's voice is not as difficult as it's not as hard as you think it is. I want you to pray. You say, God, help me. If you follow the system of this world, popular things will be happening everywhere. But God is saying, I'm not there. I'm not there. If you want to know my character, it's in the word. If you want to know my response to every situation, it's in the word. How I respond to fornication is still the same. How I respond to lying is still the same. How I respond to stealing is still the same. How I respond to lying, uh, to, to anything mentioned it is still the same. I have not changed my character of responding to those things. I have not changed in my character of how I respond to those things. I have not changed in my character. I have never changed. God has not changed. Open your mouth and say, God help me. That the ones I am seeing through scripture, I will follow them. I will obey. I will do the word of God. The word is meant to be done. The work of the believer is to do the word. He said, be a doers of the word of God and not hear us only. Deceiving yourself. If anybody does not tell you these kind of things, they have lied to you. They have lied to you. They don't love you sincerely. God who loves us said that from a child, you have known the Holy Scripture. It is able to make you wise unto salvation. Apply the, the word of God to your marriage. Apply it to your business. Apply it to your relationship. Apply it to your career. Apply it to your investment. Apply it to your family. Apply it to your skill in parenting. Apply it to your ministry. Apply it to everything that concerns your life. It is the word of God. Jesus is the living logos. Eternal logos of God. Eternal. The word is a lamp unto my feet, Lord. So where we shall a young man cleanse his way. He said, by taking it according to the word of the Lord. Light is in the word of the Lord. Light is in the word of the Lord. My sister, light is in the word of the Lord. Look at how much God loves you. Every time you read the Bible, you see it there. I love you. 365 times. He says, fear not, I am with you. It's in the Bible. It's there. Follow it. Follow it. Get direction for your life. Holy Spirit, help us. God is speaking to somebody in this service this morning. God is speaking to somebody as you are going back home. You are saying, I cannot live a cheap life. Never. Not me. Instead of just going like this, I will start following the word of God. Instead of just living anyhow, I will now listen to God. I will not take steps until I am sure that God is saying I should take that step. That step. If I have not heard God, then I am not going to make any move. I will hear the voice of God. He speaks. He leads. Jesus Christ at Garden of Gethsemane. He went to pray for three hours. The first time he went to pray. And he says, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Did you hear God say anything? No. He left. He came back the second time. Father, if it is possible, let it. Did you hear God say anything? No. 
he came back the third time and he said father if it is possible and it's your will let it come as soon as he didn't hear anything jesus knew the answer go and follow the original will we have said that you are going to die oh yeah go and die so he just said not my will again i'll follow what you have said before in other words in silence jesus followed the last instruction say god help me can you say god help me and if you study the word you will know the character of god you will know your life will be a different life you will outshine those people in your generation in your family that that are just living anyhow you will be the one teaching them the word of god you will give them guidance and counseling they will see you and they will say the man who knows light the woman who has seen light has come well, let's listen to her for in her light we will see light thank you jesus blessed be your holy name in jesus mighty name we have prayed holy spirit we thank you lord your sons and daughters are loved by you and you have chosen that in through this tourist series you're going to help us see light but i pray as they go back home to their various houses as they have heard this word that you will impress in their hearts the desire the hunger to study the word that this year 2021 nobody will live their life without studying the word they will apply the word to their lives they will apply it to their businesses they will apply it to their career they will apply it to their marriages they will apply it to everything that concerns them in the name of jesus thank you blessed holy spirit in jesus mighty name we have